So recently I was going through my collection of fragrances. I noticed that I have three fragrances in my collection with a similar name. Three fragrances from the house of Guerlain, Aqua di Parma, and of course Paris Monte Carlo. And the names are Bergamot Calabria for the Guerlain and Bergamotto di Calabria for Aqua di Parma and Paris Monte Carlo. If this is Guerlain right here, this is uh, Aqua di Parma right here, and then this is Paris Monte Carlo. If you want to find out about these three fragrances, focusing on bergamot as a note, as a main player, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, and of course participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So yes, bergamot and fragrances, love them. I recently did a citrus fragrances video focusing on lemons, bergamot, and lime. And since then I picked up two additional fragrances, of course, bergamot Calabria from Guerlain and Bergamotto de Calabria from uh, Aqua di Parma. Both of these fragrances are under the LVMH umbrella. So they're owned by LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy. And then of course we have Paris Monte Carlo, which is an independent company who's also a sister company of Houbigan. So three different fragrances focusing on uh, Bergamot and three of them very similarly named Bergamot Calabria. Bergamotto de Calabria, Bergamotto de Calabria. So I'm assuming Calabria is a region in Italy where Bergamot is produced and uh, Italy is the largest producer of Bergamot for perfumes. I believe that's what I've researched and found out. And Bergamot is uh, used in a lot of fragrances, many, many fragrances. In fact, a lot of uh, top notes for fragrances that features a citrus note at the top usually uses bergamot so it is always being used in perfumes but in these three fragrances they are pretty much the main player so it is all about bergamot with additional notes added to kind of complement and um, intensify some of the uh, experience of the bergamot so I'm going to tell you about the Bergamot Calabria of Guerlain first. This is from the Aqua Allegoria collection. So Bergamot Calabria from Guerlain is a fragrance I fell in love with recently. I, I just love citruses. I just love the way they smell. Very juicy, citrusy, just authentic smells. And I thought this was a very, very authentic smell. This one, according to the notes, I have Bergamot and Pettigrain at the top. In the heart, you got cardamom, ginger, and in the base notes, you got woody notes and musk. So very, very simplistic, very, very fresh and refreshing, and I really enjoy wearing it. In fact, I brought this back from Spain recently, um, around the time I launched that uh, citrus uh, lemon fragrances video, which also focused on lime and bergamot. So I discovered this there. It was on a sales rack, and I picked it up. And normally buy the 100 mLs, but the 50 mLs are... Um, uh, was a good deal there. So this one when you first spray it, it's a uh, juicy with the bergamot of course because it is all about bergamot and you also have this complementing pedigree note which is the uh, the green bitter leaves of the orange tree. Now it doesn't say it's the leaves from um, the bergamot tree so I'm assuming this is a pedigree. Traditionally it's come from the orange tree and uh, it adds a unique woody green bitter uh, uh, smell to the bergamot, but what you're experiencing at the top mostly is the bergamot. In the heart, there are some elements of spiciness from um, cardamom uh, going into like an aromatic kind of direction, and then of course ginger adds a zingy spiciness as well. But I don't think these uh, notes are very, very strong for me because the bergamot is pretty much what's uh, at play here. But the fragrance does become woody as it dries down and very, very clean musk, which the woody notes and the musky notes are pretty intense for me. As the fragrance is drying, the bergamot is like um, dissolving and uh, disappearing. You're left with a beautiful a woody, uh, musky uh, combination. So I find this one quite pleasant. I really, really enjoy it. And um, I think it's becoming a winner for me and I'm glad I have it in my collection. I haven't bought Aqua Allegoria fragrances in the past, so this is the first time I'm buying it. And I want to explore this collection from Guerlain uh, further. So this is uh, Guerlain's Bergamot Calabria from the Aqua Allegoria collection. So let's go next to the Aqua di Parma collection. This is from the Blue Mediterraneo collection. So it's Aqua di Parma, Blue Mediterraneo, Bergamato di Calabria. 
So with this one at the top, you've got bergamot and citron. In the heart, you've got ginger, cedar, floral notes. In the base, you've got vetiver, benzoin, and musk. So sort of kind of similar breakdown. Uh, you've got additional notes at the base here with this one. And then you've uh, also got the additional... Um, they're just moved around a little bit because they've moved the cedar up to the heart here with this one whereas the woody notes in the other one was in the base because in this one they've added that additional vetiver which is also dark earthy woody and then they've added the benzoin note which is a sweet resin now this one i felt like it was on the weak side to me compared to this one right here, it, I felt like the Guerlain was more intense than the Aqua de Parma. Although, um, I think the wearing experience is like that, but um, you still go through the, the notes breakdown and you still experience what I'm uh, telling you about. So with this one, uh, when you first spray it, again, it's all about the bergamot, but this time you've got the citron added to it. The citron is this kind of like tart, um, lemony kind of a note uh, which kind of complements the bergamot of course but the guerlain you had the pedigrain but with the citron it's more juicy lemony still some bitter uh, notes added whereas the pedigrain goes woody uh, the citron does not so it's a little more juicy uh, at the top with this one in the heart you got some of that ginger and um, uh, floral notes you do pick up some light light very light floral touches here not overwhelming and then you also have uh, that cedar note which gives it the woody uh, depth to the fragrance finally in the base it gets more woody with the vetiver but there's a um a grassy earthy element to that vetiver then you know the benzoin even though it's mentioned here i don't get much of it i think it's just ben benzoin traditionally is a vanillic so it's a resin um, it does have a little bit of vanillic touch at the bottom but for me i found that the base was mostly about the vetiver and the musk it's very very clean this is a refreshing fragrance uh, if you want it to be on the lighter side this is the one you should go compared to these two i felt like this one had more depth as far as a citrus fragrance goes this one to me felt very light almost bordering like an eau de cologne even though both of them are eau de toilettes so let's talk about the third one in the collection and that is uh, paris monte carlo's bergamotto de calabria and as i said the first two fragrances are under the LVM, lvmh umbrella this one is an independent company uh, a niche house um, that is um, not necessarily as big as these two galan and aqua de parma of course but still, they, they've got some great um, fragrances under their belt. Now with this one, what you have at the top are bergamot, pedigree, black pepper, and pink pepper. So you've got a lot more going on here with this one at the top. The heart notes, you've got orange blossom, neroli, and jasmine. In the base notes, you've got iris, sandalwood, vetiver, and musk. For me, this one has a little more depth than this one, but it has still it doesn't come close to the guerlain as far as like intensity of the juiciness to me this one seems a little more skin scenty just like this one as i said but still a lot more depth than the aqua de parma uh not as much depth uh as this one to me this one for some reason this one stands out a lot like the juiciness stands out whereas this one they've stripped away the juiciness just like this one as well it's like lighter experience uh, but sometimes those kind of fragrances can be uh what do you call it uh, more appropriate for when it's really really hot sometimes like the extra depth of a fragrance can weigh down the smell on someone whereas they're looking for something very light and refreshing and then that extra intensity uh, can be a little stronger for wearing during the warmer hotter humider days but this is a love at first sniff for me it's amazing the way it smells it is a very very clean clean um fragrance and again this one also has that musk in the base all three of these fragrances had musk but this one when you first spray, spray it it's it's all about bergamot and you get lights hint of pep light hints of peppery touches and of course that bitter woody earthy green um a leaf of from the pedigree the orange tree is up there as well but mostly it's about the, the bergamot and then in the heart there are some uh 
floral touches of the orange tree, the orange blossom, and the neroli. And if you have been asking what the differences are, they're just different distillation processes. You get one way you get orange blossom, and another, another way you get neroli. But there are some powdery elements in the base here. The iris does pop through for me with light hints of sandalwood with a little bit of uh, vetiver as well. Then, of course, drying down to a beautiful, clean, woody musk with this one. This is a gorgeous scent. So this actually ends up being my number two favorite out of the three. Um, I just get more intensity and depth with this one, and I like that I like that about it. It's a little more lemony, even though I don't I don't mention. Um, uh, the the fragrance having lemon. I'm assuming it comes off more pulpy. I don't know if you know what that means, but like the juice, the pulp of the juice is in here. That's why it's giving it more depth. Comparing to these two, uh, they don't have any pulp. It's just the juice, so it's clearer. I don't I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but that's what I'm getting with these two. But if I want to rank them, I think the Guerlain is uh, my favorite of the three followed by Paris Monte Carlo's Bergamotto di Calabria and then of course uh, Acqua di Parma's Bergamotto di Calabria. Interesting that the names are very similar. I'm assuming there's also additional fragrances out there from other brands that call their fragrance Bergamotto di Calabria and I think that's the reason why is because the region is known for producing Bergamot. Anyway those are my th uh, thoughts on these three fragrances. What are your thoughts? First of all, let me ask you, do you guys like bergamot and fragrances? Do you like that? There are so many different bergamot fragrances, but I wanted to focus on these three because these are definitely named bergamot calabria or bergamot de calabria. Anyway, guys, let me know if you've tried these fragrances. Did you tried the Guerlain bergamot calabria from the Aqua Allegoria collection? Have you tried the Aqua de Parma? Bergamotto de Calabria from the Blue Mediterranean collection and of course have you tried the Paris Monte Carlo Bergamotto de Calabria. Let me know if you like these fragrances, if you're fans of these houses and if you have other fragrances that are called Bergamot or Bergamotto de Calabria, let me know, put some comments down so that I found out. Other than that guys, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>